share my screen. Um, by the way, just a quick note, I have multiple pets and sometimes they decide it's fight time while I'm having meetings. So if you hear weird monster noises um, from my side, uh, I apologize for that. Anyway, today's talk, um, I'm going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of being a lead in game dev. Again, my name is Emily Grace Buck and I am the lead narrative designer at Ubisoft Reflections in Newcastle. So a bit more about me, uh, like I said, I'm currently at Ubisoft Reflections, but I've been in the industry for quite a long time now um, and had a few other leadership positions before this. I was the narrative lead on a game called The Waylanders at Gato Studio. I was the narrative lead for a while on a project called Destruction All-Stars with Lucid Games and Sony that recently just launched for PS5. Um, I was also a narrative lead at a interactive TV studio called Echo worked on um, a TV show for Netflix called Patriot Act. I did a whole bunch of stuff at Telltale, including being the design lead for a number of games, um, worked in instructional design and as an elementary school teacher and a musical theater actor before that. So uh, lots of stuff. Um, and I bring that up because I wanna confess that I have made every single mistake I'm gonna talk about <laughs> in this talk today. Um, being a lead is really difficult and there are a lot of things I wish I had known and thought about before I became a lead. And I'm hoping maybe I can save you from making some of those mistakes today. So first of all, let me just get it out there. Game dev culture is weird. Um, and by that, I mean, we in general have pretty bad attrition rates. We don't tend to have great work-life balance and game dev tends to have really bad workplace satisfaction issues. Um, this has recently become less bad than it used to be, but the average career in game dev is still five years or less. So for many of you who are, you know, just graduating from uni, you might be 21, 22. That means you might be out of the industry by 27, which is completely insane. Um, and I want to stop things like that from happening. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for your teams. I don't want that for the industry. Um, Cause we all know working on games can often look a lot like this. The, this is fine dog. Um, everything's on fire and you just kind of proceed and do the best that you possibly can. And let me just be clear here. You individually are not gonna fix game dev culture. That's not the takeaway from this talk. That's not what I'm expecting to happen here, but with some of these handy tips and tricks, you can probably make some choices about your behavior that may positively influence others around you and may make your life less stressful. And less stress is always a good thing in my book. So let's get this out of the way. You may become a lead in games very early. Um, like I said, the attrition rate in this industry is not good, <laughs> um, which means there are a lot of times where people end up becoming leads in their 20s, sometimes even in their early 20s, maybe even earlier than that. Um, and sometimes that happens by surprise or by default. That's what happened to me. I became a lead for the first time because someone got demoted off a project. The next time I became a lead, it was because there were no other senior people. <laughs> Um, it wasn't because I was shooting for it. It wasn't because I applied for it. It was because I was the only one left. Um, and that happens way more often than it should in this industry. So it's good to be prepared for it. So you go from, yeah, this is the, this is fine dog, like I said. Um, but once you are the lead, you get to be the rest of the, this is fine dog comic. This part doesn't get shared as much. <laughs> because suddenly it's your responsibility to put out the fire or make sure that the fire never starts in the first place. You no longer can just sit there going, well, everything sucks, but I'll persevere. Um, you actively now need to do something about it. And if you're not prepared for that, uh, you can end up making faces like this poor little dog. So game dev culture is really insular. And by that, I mean, we tend to become really good friends with the people we work with. Um, and that can be wonderful. Obviously having a group of friends that 
have the same interests as you, who are around your same age, who are at the same part of life as you. That's rad. Um, being able to go to the pub after work, I love it. Um, but that can also be really brutal because when you get promoted to lead, or if you suddenly become lead, or if you apply for a lead position, that whole dynamic changes. Like I said, you suddenly are the one putting out the fires instead of being able to sit there watching it burn. Um, and that can become an enormous source of stress, not just for you, but for everybody on your team, because not only are you watching the project have issues, now your personal life is potentially having issues as well because your friendships are affected. Your family might be affected, um, especially if you're, you know, in a romantic relationship with someone else in games. Um, it can have really serious knock-on effects beyond just what you do day to day. Um, I don't know how many of you can relate to this meme, but certainly um, when I started working in games in my mid-20s, this was me. <laughs> um, I was just completely and utterly immersed in game dev culture. And to be frank, it bit me in the ass when I became a lead and didn't really know what I was doing. Okay, so why is it that we do this? A lot of us, we spend all day working in games or taking classes on games. Then we go home, we play more games. We talk to our friends who also play games, our roommates who play games, our significant others who play games, and it becomes like our entire world, right? Even if this isn't you, there's probably some aspect of this in your life. Like there's a reason that you're chasing this as a career. It's a hard career. It's not something that you can just, you know, wake up and go, oh, I'm going to be a game dev. It takes immense skill. It takes a lot of training. It takes a lot of luck. Um, so why are we doing this? Because for a lot of us, it's our dream job. It's wonderful. It's something we've thought about since we were kids, right? We all grew up probably playing some kind of games or found them later in life and were inspired. We wanted to make people have the kind of experiences that we'd had. It's powerful that, and that kind of thing, your dream job, you don't want to screw that up. <laughs> And because of everything I talked about, it's easier to mess up than it should be. So without further ado, I'm going to give you some tips of how to hopefully <laughs> not mess up your dream job and keep your life a little bit more level. So each time I'll do a don't and then I'll do the coordinating do of what you can do instead. So first of all, don't rush to be promoted to lead because you want a shiny title. We see this a lot. Um, people come into the game industry, they're very excited, they've played a lot of games, maybe they were leads on their university projects, and they want to be in charge again. They have a lot of really good ideas, they want that on their resume, um, and they're eager, which is completely understandable and reasonable. Um, but here's the thing, sometimes we have to grind, right? Like life is a little bit more like Dark Souls <laughs> than I'd like to admit it is. Um, we have to get better at our skills and we have to in so sometimes earn it. We're not gonna magically become leads immediately. There are a lot of people who want to be in this industry. There are a lot of people who are really, really good at what they do. And the chances of you being a lead immediately out of university or college or even post-grad are slim, um, even if you're working at a really small company. Also remember that titles vary widely throughout the industry. It's really different being a lead at a small studio where you're leading two people as opposed to um, like where I am now at Ubisoft. Um, I'm about to have eight people that I'm managing on my team. Um, and we're, you know, making a very large game. It's just a different thing. Um, and even different studios use titles differently. Some places will call them lead. Some places will call them director. Some places just say senior. Um, some places say things like advanced lead. And there isn't a standardization. So you don't have to worry as much about literally what your title 
says. Focus on doing a really good job, learning how to do what you're doing, and enjoy. Like even Dark Souls, it's frustrating, right? And sometimes we throw controllers, but it's meant to be fun. It's a game. So here's another one. Don't think that being good at your job means you know how to lead people. I absolutely fell into this trap. I am a good game designer and narrative designer, frankly. I learned how to do that. I paid my dues. I got good at it. I felt very secure in it. Leading people is a completely different skill set. <laughs> um, uh, whereas my job is pretty technical as a narrative designer, leading people um, is a lot of soft skills that frankly, I didn't have when I first became a leader. I didn't have the maturity level. I didn't know how to talk to people. I didn't know how to give feedback. I didn't know how to take feedback. Um, and it was a problem um, because that's not the same thing. And when I was talking earlier about people getting kind of suddenly promoted, that's part of how that happens a lot. They'll take the person who's the best at their job on the team and put them into the leadership role. And you could be the best animator, artist, programmer, engineer, marketing personnel, narrative designer in the world. That doesn't mean you know how to lead people. So instead, do take the time to learn how to manage a team. Take leadership or management courses if you can. A lot of companies, if you're in a big company, may even pay for you to do this. It's worth asking. Talk to your HR department and find out what they have available. Read books on the subject. There are tons and tons of books on management and leadership where you can learn how to talk to people. Um, there are some on game dev leadership specifically, but um, if you just go to your local library, there are shelves and shelves and shelves of books on this. Find ones that resonate with you and do what you can. Um, training with a leadership coach also is a really good shout. This can be very expensive if you're paying for it yourself. Um, again, if you're at a big company, you may be able to have someone uh, in your company pay for it for you or even supply you with someone. Um, it's worth it. This is extremely worth looking into because again, very few people have actual training on this. It's gonna make you stand out. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. It's gonna make your team's life a lot easier. Um, I, I can't recommend this enough. Um, even if you are thrown into a leadership position, you can then do this kind of training retroactively. Um, you don't need it ahead of time, but if you have it ahead of time, then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, don't try to do everything yourself. This is a huge trap that we see leads in game dev fall into all the time. Um, because they're often the best at their discipline, once they get promoted to lead, that means, oh, I get to you know be the vision holder. I get to own everything. And they try to do absolutely everything themselves. Um, and that's not a great way to be. Instead, consider delegating and trusting your team. Your team was hired because they're all capable people. And if they're really not that capable, um, it's now your job to level them up or figure out a way forward. Um, so give people tasks, let them do things, trust them to do it right. Trust them to do it in a way that's going to work even if it's not 100% your vision or the way that you would have done things. You can't do it all yourself. You're gonna go bananas. Here's another one. Don't try to shield your team from the realities of game dev. Iterate forever before involving them because you want things to be perfect or wait for the ideal time or last minute to roll things out to them. This is another one we see all the time. Leads will sit on information um, until they know 100% exactly how they want the team to execute things. Then roll it out to the team with only a few days left. The team ends up crunching. The quality isn't as good. When you know that you need to make a change to the game, or to your process um, if you're in a non-dev type of role, tell the team about it. It can be worth taking some time to think of a strategy before you talk to them, but don't leave it for too long. Absolutely involve them in the process. Let them feel some ownership. They are there for you. Don't think about your team as a hindrance. Think about them as a resource and communicate. <laughs> talk to them, ask them what they want, ask them how they can help. Um, Try to figure out ways to guide them forward and work as a cell and not as a person with a bunch of assistants. 
Here's another one. Don't fall into the trap of thinking you need to be a lead or in charge of things right away in order to be valid and successful. In game dev, um, again, because our attrition rates are terrible, <laughs> um, a lot of people do become leads really early. You see this a lot, especially on social media. There's a lot of people um, on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok who are very young and already in positions of a surprising amount of power in the industry. A lot of them are unbelievably qualified, like I'm not questioning their ability to do things, but it can set a unrealistic standard that we look at. Like, you are not a failure if you don't end up on a Forbes 30 under 30 list. Let me be perfectly clear about that. Um, they're on that list because that is exceptional and extremely difficult to do. Most people do not end up becoming seniors or leads until their 30s or possibly even 40s. Some people don't even ever hit those title bumps and that's fine. Some people don't want to. Um, also, it's good to take the time to hone your craft and gain life experience. There are aspects of being a lead that I'm better at now simply because I've lived longer. <laughs> and that sounds terrible. Um, and if somebody had told me that when I was 20, I probably would have wanted to punch them in the face. Um, so I apologize. And if you want to yell at me, uh, the q and is right there. Um, but like this picture of Clementine here, you know, she grows up, she learns, she gets better at things. Um, and because she, you know, isn't the protagonist of the story until season four, she has time to grow into it. However, though, please believe in yourself and go for it. Like, if you want to be a lead, do it. Talk to your manager, talk to the people at your school, apply for the jobs you want, like, and listen to feedback if it doesn't or does work out. Just keep learning, stay open. Here's another one. Uh, don't be afraid of being promoted or applying for jobs you want when opportunities arise. This kind of goes with the last slide. Like I said, if you want to be a lead, apply for it. Let them turn you down. If you think you're qualified, show them your portfolio. Show them your skills. Show them your resume. Talk about what you think makes you qualified to be a lead in your interview beyond just skills um, that you have in your discipline. Talk about your management skills. Talk about your leadership abilities, things like that. Um, let them turn you down. A lot of people in games rule themselves out of the process, especially marginalized folks. Women are less likely to apply for jobs unless they meet every single qualification on a list. You, you don't have to do that. Apply for the job if you have the time and you want to. Don't hold yourself back. And also, please always ask for support, help, and training when you need it. Again, if you're in a company of any kind of like good standing, if you say, hey, I have these weaknesses and I'd like to get better at them, the company's response should be, thank you for letting me know, how can we help you? Um, same thing with a university, if you're a student. Work as the team, work with the other people in your cell, work with the company that you're with or your school and learn, don't be afraid. So that's all I have for today. Um, obviously there's a lot of other do's and don'ts for being a lead, but at this point, sit with that, think about it um, and enjoy the rest of the conference. This is my personal email address. If you have other questions, um, please let me know. I'm not sure I'm gonna have time to address anything in the Q&A right now because we need to get to the next talk, um, but I'm gonna be typing the answers in um, instead of answering them out loud. So once again, thank you so much for coming. It's been an absolute privilege and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for that, Emily. That was really great. I mean, I took, I took loads of notes myself there. I think I ran out of paper, the amount of do's and don'ts that I, I, I took. But no, honestly, that was fantastic. Thank you. I think we've got question um, time for one um, verbal um, answer, if that's okay with you, I'll pick one out. Sure. Um, okay. Okay, what 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 is what has it been your experience being like a woman in the industry, especially one who leads teams? Absolutely. Um, I mean, of course, it's more difficult as a woman in this industry. Like, I don't think I need to justify that games ha still has a bit of a sexism problem. Um, it's it's difficult. I'm not gonna lie. There are moments where uh, 
it's hard to be heard, even if you are the most senior person or the lead in the room. I've had moments where I've walked into a room um, and been the one giving the presentation and someone assumes I'm a secretary, which isn't great. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to say though, it gets a lot better. Um, I think everybody in the industry is starting to understand that we need to change and we need to shift. Um, it's also, you know, I'm older than I was when I started, which immediately does command some more respect. But there are so many more women and people of color and other marginalized folks coming in now that it's starting to be more normalized. And I just encourage you, if you are a member of a marginalized group, and like I'm a member of multiple ones myself, I'm autistic, I'm queer, I'm a woman. Um, just keep pushing forward um, and reach out to others in the industry who can help you. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions or talk to people if they need it. Awesome, thank you. Honestly, that was really great. Um, I mean, you've got a ton of questions. I can see you've got nine in the um, Q&A box. So good luck right. with those. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for taking the time out today to give that talk. It was really insightful.